Welcome, friends, to this final session of our three-day program. As I said earlier, we should practice what we preach, we should practice what we read, we should practice what we hear. Let's practice. Let's meditate. Now, in this session of meditation, we apply the normal rules which we will apply all the time and use the different modes of meditation, namely, first step to establish ourselves at the center of the third eye, that we are sitting at the third eye in the center of the head. And the first step, before we do anything else, we close our eyes, see that we are aware of the body, we are aware of the head, and that the head is on top of our body, the body is like a house, we are in the sixth floor, the level of the sixth floor is behind the eyes, we are sitting in the center of that room. Once we settle down there, we can sit down on a chair, cushion, mat, whatever we are used to, an imaginary one, but a good one, expensive one, that's free today. <laughs> so we take the best that we can and we sit on it in the center of the head and then then we repeat the words of Simran. Those who do not have uh, initiation or have no words of mantra, they can coin a short phrase for today uh, expressing their love for the beloved. A short phrase that they keep on repeating slowly. When we repeat the words of the mantra or the Simran, it should be done deliberately, slowly, and with the idea of listening to every part of the word. Remember, it's not the repetition that's going to pull our attention, it's the listening to what we are repeating that's going to pull our attention. Therefore, listen carefully to what your mind is speaking. The mind is repeating, you listen. The mind is the speaker and the soul is the listener. So you listen carefully <coughs> what you are repeating. As you repeat, you can see many scenes come up. You can see faces. Some faces you may not recognize. Strange faces sometimes come up in front of you and they keep passing one after the other. Many faces are from past lives. They are associations from past lives and they are drawn up during meditation and they come in front of you. Do not follow any face, any form, anything that happens. Look at it from a distance and you will notice that they don't stay, they move. Let them move from one side to the other. Like a television screen, something is moving across. You concentrate on staying in the center and don't be pull, pulled forward by what is happening in front. Whatever it is, you just watch. If you can hear a sound, you listen to the sound. If the sound has a pulling quality and can, you feel that it can pull you upwards, then you listen to the sound and you can, for that moment, give up the repetition of the words. If the sound is not clear, you can keep on repeating the words. And if the sound becomes dull or less or not pulling, you can go back to repetition of the words. If the sound is coming in a very steady way, and you're doing your repetition of the words, keep on repeating. Ignore a sound that does not have too much of a pull. If a sound becomes attractive and pulling, then you switch. If you see the form of your master, then hold the master by talking to the master and at the same time trying to repeat. Repeat the words first. Repeat the words while looking at the form of the master. If the master's form remains and they, they don't scatter and does not disappear, then you know the master is actually there. And you can really talk to the master. It's, if you can learn how to repeat the word at the same time have a conversation, you can do that too. It's not very difficult, but needs a little practice. Once you've done that, if you feel that you are rising from the body, that you are leaving the body behind, don't get worried. Just uh, allow 
the attention to be withdrawn upwards, nothing is happening. It's only the attention being withdrawn. Your body is functioning normally. And when the attention is withdrawn, gradually, even the whole body can be dis can disappear. You can vacate the attention from the whole body and pull it to the third eye center. When that happens, you find that you have a body which is very light and can fly. During this session of meditation, I may also suggest for some of you who want to fly in the inner sky. How many of you would like to fly in the inner sky today? Okay, I may also suggest a way to get out of that space which you have created and take a window or a, a lighted window that will come up into which you can go and go into a sky and fly and you can look down upon the world as it is. So that uh, everybody may not get it, but many people do get it. So if you can have that experience, it will be a very nice experience to show you how your light body, your astral body, is capable of a lot of experiences inside. And then, after all is done, I will call count five, as I have been doing before, and draw the attention back to the body and back to this auditorium. Fair enough. Any questions? Okay, if you're ready, close your eyes. Put your body in a comfortable position, which is comfortable enough not to have any aches and pains in the limbs, and yet not so comfortable that it makes you go to sleep. If you sit upright, it will be a good position to be in. Close your eyes and center yourself. Imagine the house in which you are sitting has six floors. You are on the top sixth floor. It's a round roof on top of the head. It's funny, the physical eyes are in front of you. The physical ears are on either side of you. You are sitting on a firm ground, not on a soft ground. You are very comfortable in the center. You can look in the front, you can look on the side. You are comfortable. If you think you are too close to the eyes in front, move backwards. Put a little pressure on your feet and drag your chair back to the center. Start repeating your Simran, your mantra, the holy words, charged words given to you by your master. Repeat them very slowly. Deliberately listen to every syllable. Keep on repeating over and over again. Don't move from the center. Repeat in such a way that you can hear it. You can speak inside louder to make it more easy to listen. You can speak as loud as you like inside your head and listen to it. Keep it slow. Any sounds coming up, pay attention to them, but don't move towards the sound. Stay in the center. Check how many sounds are coming. See if there is a sound behind the sound. See if any sounds are nearby and some are close and some are far. 
see which direction they come from. Put your attention on the sounds. Put your attention on the repetition of words. Imagine your master has come in, in front of you. See him walking in. Look at him. Is he smiling? Is he serious? Keep on repeating the words as you see him. Do not give up the meditation of Simran. Repeat the words as you look at the master. Express your love and devotion for the master. Thank him for what he has done for you. Thank him for what he has given you. Remember all he has given you today, yesterday, day before, whole month, the whole year. Thank him for all he gave. Remember what he gave you. Thank him as much as you can. See his response. If you cannot see him, start repeating the words again with great intensity. Do it with love and devotion, lot of feelings. Express what you feel for the Master. Stay in the center. Don't move. Look around on the front, on the right, on the left, if there is a wide window open, see if there is a lighted place, a square or a rectangle lighted place. If you see an open window from where the light is coming in, go towards it. You can look out and see the sky outside. You see how light your body is, you can easily slip out of that window, climb up and slip out and you can fly outside, see how easy it is to fly. You can be flying in the sky, fly high, go upwards, more upwards. Look how the world is right below, the earth is right below. You are in the clouds and above the clouds. See if anybody else is flying with you. Is your master also flying with you? Are you alone? Do you see anybody else flying? Keep flying, go higher. See how high you can go. Enjoy your flight. See the color of the sky. Is it blue? Is it gray? Is it orange? Is it red? See what is the color of the sky above you. See how the world looks below you. Keep flying. Now turn around. Go backwards to the window. You can see the window in the distance. Go back into that window. 
go back to your center, go back to your room, meditation room, stay in the center, contemplate on what you have just seen, thank your master, see the master is there, talk to him, repeat the words of mantra, repeat the words of Simran. Stay in the center. Just think of what happened. Don't think of anything else. Don't let your mind wander. Concentrate on being there. Keep a smile on your face. Enjoy what you are seeing. Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. Welcome back. How many of you were successfully able to do this meditation? Very good. How many of you could fly? Very good. Small number, but still good. It's uh, once you uh, concentrate your attention and detach yourself from the experience of the, the things outside, it will become very easy for you to fly in the inner sky. That's the astral sky. It's, uh, it's actually the overlap of the physical and the astral sky. And therefore, you can have a contact with this world from there as well as the next world. But when you go higher up, then it becomes a new world altogether. These are the beginnings. After that, when you have this experience, after that, you come to the radiant form of the master and then he becomes your permanent companion and he comes and goes, appears and disappears for a while, but then he stays steady. And that's, he doesn't go anywhere. Actually, it's our attention that is not focused enough. Our attention moves and back and forth and therefore sometimes we don't see it. It is customary for me in some of these uh, programs to offer you on behalf of the great master some astral gifts. How many of you have ever received astral gifts from the roof? Oh, so many of you already received them. <laughs> Very good. How many of you would like to receive them? Or at least take a chance at finding them. <laughs> Okay, let's do that now. In this small event of uh, getting a gift, astral gift, not a physical gift. Physical prashad will follow later. But this is just something that is not from this world. Uh, to do this, you will close your eyes and go on top of the roof of this building. On the top of the building. You can go from outside and climb, you can clamor, you can just fly straight through. It won't be difficult to go on top. Again, it's an imaginative exercise. And you are going to use your imagination to go. What will surprise you will be, the gift will be surprise you. Of course, if you get one, that it is not what you expect and it is not uh, made of the stuff that you see normally here. When you go to the top of the roof of this building and you walk on top, you'd see a package. If you see a package, that's your gift. You can unwrap it there or bring it down, unwrap it here and see what it contains. Are you ready? Close your eyes and imagine you are going on top of this. You can go by any means suitable and just feel that you are on top of this building and look around. If you see a package, take it. No hurry, take your time. You can walk on the roof and pick up your package. Go 
open it there and see what it is or bring it down and open it here and see. Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. Come back here. How many of you could find a package in this short time? Well, quite a few. How many of you liked what was there? How many of you found it or something totally unexpected? Very good. The, uh, the beauty of our consciousness is that the mind, mind part of it, tries to understand. But the soul part does not understand, does not want to understand. The soul part wants to experience. The understanding, rationalizing, making sense of it is a mental activity. What comes, we take it. But the thing is that in these cases, we cannot always understand what we got, which leads to another lesson on, in Santmat, in the spiritual path, that when life gives us something, we accept it. This acceptance is a very important part. The more we accept what comes to us, the less new karma comes up, the less new karma we create, and that acceptance is develops love and devotion for our master because we know it's a gift from the master. Everything that we get in this life is a gift from the master. And therefore, when we accept it, we are accepting a gift with gratitude. So whatever we get, we say thank you. We have got so much from our masters that even if we keep on saying thank you, thank you all the time, it's not enough. You can look back and see what the masters have done. So thank you is a good word all the time. And it in meditation and outside of meditation. Uh, our spiritual literature which says that we are like black crows and when we go above the mind, we have a dip in the nectar of Amritsar, true Amritsar, uh, not the outside Amritsar. True Amritsar, the lake of Amrit, and we came, come out with swans. The black crows, you will see the black crows going and coming out with swans. And so that's a transformation that happens. The sec second transformation that takes place at the same time is that the five vices, lust, anger, aggressiveness, greed, ego, they disappear. They run away like little boys from the tank where we are getting a dip, black crow is having a dip, you see, they run away when you come out of this one. Okay, uh, we have come to the conclusion of this uh, uh, program, and any final questions you have, you can ask me, that on what we have been doing in these three days, or what we have not done, you can ask. Yes. Babaji, Jidhiya Rufa, Sanstal Kamal Tak Da Jinnanu Guru Milya Uthe Thayar Ginyan, well, this was a question in Punjabi and might translate part of it that uh, says there are many, many saints, many mystics, many masters who have gone to different levels of consciousness. As it happens because they have not seen anything beyond, they think that is the final destination. And they very often call it such kind, they call it the true home. People who have taken their disciples to the astral stage, the astral stage is looks exactly like the like the state from which this world is created. So you feel that you have come to a world where you, it's, this world this world was physical was created, physical is a reflection of that. So it looks like a final stage. Unless there is somebody who goes above that. Even a disciple, even a seeker can mistake that he has reached the final stage. Every stage we go to, if the master has not gone above that, he will think this is it. This is final stage. Those who take us to the level of Trikuti, 
and the top of the causal stage which is the home of the universal mind the merging in the universal mind of the individual mind they think is like merging of the soul in the portion of totality of consciousness in such kind but there is no way for them to know there is anything better but the seekers of the soul the soul is seeking and those seekers will not be satisfied if they are really seeking their own true home and if they keep on seeking the master will come and take them back those who reach that state and die in the physical body never have a chance uh, to see master they will be reborn even if they have gone there and left the body to stay forever they will have to be reborn as human beings be reinitiated by a master who takes them back home the gateway to going to a true home is the human body even if you are stuck somewhere for a long time in a high region and your seeking is not over then you come back again as a human being reinitiated by a perfect living master who takes you beyond okay yes thanks <coughs> then you want to ask i uh, <clears throat> thank you ishwar can you please uh pray to great master salam to increase the love that we may really be able to listen and reach our goal of realizing all his love and light and i want to ask if we're successful with his grace to meditate uh, concentratedly and, and merge into the sound that will that help heal this earth great master's blessing is on all of us we have met here for these three days has anyone experienced that their love for the master has increased in these three days has anybody been inspired to do more meditation it's a good sign that is that is what satsang is supposed to do the blessing is there you don't worry the blessing is there and there we have uh, as you know we have a great masters bandara bandara was a tradition set up by masters long ago and great master left his body on the 2nd of april 1948 every year on the 2nd of april i remember my master and call my friends to join me so we celebrate and we find that's the day where instead of having to look at him in the physical body we could also see him in his radiant form it's a great transformation that the master was always there with us from that day when we thought he has died but we found he was not dead he was more alive for our, for those who had manifested him in radiant form so we have this bandara every year you have attended some and you know how much the presence of the master is felt that day so for my experience is concerned i see him in radiant form blessing everybody who's there it's a very great occasion i feel so happy and i jump out of my body out of happiness on that day and everybody is welcome and i invite all of you whoever wants to come and join me on the 2nd of april this year and future to join in the bandara of great master and we'll get great blessing blessings are even now there but remember one thing i am talking like this about the great master because i have seen him alive he has initiated me when he was alive i have seen his form transform from a physical form into a radiant form but now for those who have not seen him alive he cannot be their master you have to have a living master those who got a living master initiated by an actual living being they have to go by their master's blessings and they will get it from inside if i were to say i have the greatest devotion for this man and yet i say that those who have not seen him alive they are only seeing a picture of him therefore you have to go with your own living master i call him the great master people call him the great master but i tell you 
whoever has initiated you is your great master so you have to follow your own master and see that he gives you the blessings you want and ask for those blessings instead of asking outside ask the inside people say what should we ask from our master i say ask for one thing ask for master's grace master give me more grace so everything works more smoothly outside and inside in this life and inner life here and there all if you ask for grace he is giving grace but you are asking for grace makes it more visible to you that he is giving grace so therefore don't shy don't feel shy of asking from your master more grace more grace and still more grace so that will be very good